Page 192, exercise 14.2. We're talking about legato pedaling on the previous page. Legato pedaling has different names. Smooth pedaling, connected pedaling, overlap pedaling, legato pedaling. They're all basically the same stuff. There's different kinds of pedaling styles. There's legato. Smooth. It ensures there's always sound. And what it is is you overlap the foot and the hands just a little bit. So you're going to do the hands first, or the fingers, and then the pedal. Right, right at the beginning, I push those notes down first, and then the pedal. I'm going to change, they don't tell you in here where to change the pedal. You're supposed to figure it out and write it in. I'm going to change the pedal with the harmony, so I'm going to change it between, at the beginning, I'm going to change it between the first two full measures. When the bass line goes from an A flat to a B flat, I'm going to change the pedal. But I'm going to play the notes in that measure first, and then I'm going to lift the pedal up and put it back down. So the pedal lags behind. So the first couple measures or so is this. Like so, that ensures you always have sound. And that little overlap, the ear doesn't mind if it doesn't last too long. Now, between the phrases, I don't want smooth pedaling, I don't want overlap, I want to hear the phrases, so I want a little silence. So, there on, uh, it's the 34th full measure with the half notes, ends a phrase, and then you have the pickup to the next phrase. I want a little silence right in there, so I'm going to lift the pedal up with the hands on the half note and then put it down after I play the pickup note to the next measure. So that measure is here, like so, so on, on that one. And all these phrases in here, I'm going to separate them the same way. Now they have some suggestions written in here for you on playing the piece. I would recommend if you want to play this impromptu, and I don't r recall right off hand which one, impromptu and A flat, whatever it is, just go learn the whole thing. Uh, uh, it's gorgeous, and the middle part's even prettier than this. It's great. They may even give you pedal indications in there to help you out. So here, as I said before, I'm just going to change the pedal with a harmony. I'm going to follow the the uh, left hand, and as it changes, I'm, I'm going to. I mean, I change chords. So here to here. That's a different chord. So I change the pedal accordingly. And then when it goes back to here, I change the pedal again. Sometimes I'll adjust the pedal so things don't get blurry. Look at the next to the last measure in the first line. You're here. I'm going to change it for the third beat. And again for the next measure. Right there. Because we changed chords. Etc. Now there's a difference of opinion on ornaments and things, on how they're interpreted and whatnot. Look at the last couple measures of this in the second line. You have that turn in there in the right hand. Now the turn's going to come between the notes and it's going to come in time so the three beats, one, two, three, are not interrupted. So the turn, one, two, we want that. We don't want to mess that up. So the turn has to be stuck in there. So it's a so it's just four notes right in between. Some people will play the five notes, the A flat given, and the four notes in the turn all as one thing. Some people will hang on to the A flat and then do the turn. It's an interpretive thing. What do you? How do you feel? It's or the important thing is get them in without messing up the beat. The beat's got to be right there. As far as the pedal goes, we don't want to blur it too much. But because it's up here and it doesn't last very long, it doesn't seem to blur too badly. But so it's want to connect everything so I'm suggesting go ahead and leave the pedal down for the first two counts and then change it on the third count it's a different chord 
and then in the last measure. And at the end, of course, the hands and the pedal come up at the same time. That's just one way of pedaling it. There could be other ways of pedaling it. That's not an absolute thing. You must pedal it this way and no other. Nuh uh. Few things about this. First off, the whole thing is really, really soft. And that's the melody that's soft. The melody is in the right hand at the top. That, that is very soft. So everything else has to be softer than that. So if, if I'm here, you can imagine how soft everything else has to be. So whatever happens, bring out that melody. It's on the top. You put a little more weight on the melody notes. Just make sure if there's other notes to be played that everything gets down at the same time. It takes a little practice to do that. Now in this piece, as in a lot of pieces, the bass line is important. It's the melody first, and then the bass line second, and then all the other stuff after that. Or there could be a counter melody too, I won't get into that, that's okay. So we want to hear this. I can play the bass line almost as loud as the melody line. And it won't get in the way because it's so far away from the melody, you can still hear the melody just fine. And just keep everything else soft. Now that takes a little more practice because now not only are you thinking about bring out the melody, you br bring out the bass line. It's hard to do, but I would encourage you to give it some, uh, over time, it, you'll get it, really. You may not get it for a while. It can take you a few months, maybe a couple years, whatever. But if you'll just stick with it, you will get it eventually. The tendency, if you're not familiar with the piece, is to play it slowly. Sounds like a funeral march. But it's written Allegretto. Allegretto is a fun tempo. So have fun with it. So. recording to this you can listen to how the pros do it <laughs>